was 26, 26 million, 367,360. That's pretty good. Cardano is second and Solana is third. And Dogecoin and Avalanche, that's pretty high. 836,000. 836, a vast difference, but still. I don't know where Ethereum is. It should be on here, but it's not. Anyhow, you can check that out. Uh, links in the description I thought was interesting, but that's it for today. Um, what we'll do is, first of all, Jerry, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Now let's go on to the good stuff, which is everybody gets to ask Jerry a bunch of questions and I get to sit back and do nothing. There'll probably be, Jerry, what's going on with your mic? Folks, I'll be honest. I have no idea what's going on with my mic. It's just a USB plug-in microphone that I plugged in. and It works, some, it works pretty well sometimes. It sounds good to me. All right. So, guys, if you got to take off, take off. Go watch the football. Uh, but hit the like and subscribe on the way out. Let's see. Oh, look at that. D Gentleman. Rick Wilson says, I'm just glad someone else knows about Hypercycle. It seems to be crypto. I don't, like, I didn't know about it until Jerry talked about it. But Jerry told me also about, you know, his little secrets of what he would do as far as, like, um, DeFi farming and the stuff he just talked about right now as far as taking those, that yield and putting it back in. So, yeah. Jerry, how did you find out about Hypercycle? Because it's, I know it's a micro cap and people are going to accuse me. Oh, you're going to show the micro caps now? I'm like, well, well I trust that. Jerry and he's been right so far. He told me about Solana. That worked it's out pretty well. Thing. So mm -hmm. I love Cardano. I think Cardano is built well, right? It's, it's built well. It's got a good leader. It's got a good team. It's a good, it's a good product. Well, being a Cardano follower, I found out about Singularity Net. Oh, uh, yeah led by Dr. Ben Gortzel, one of the world's foremost uh, freelance AI scientists. Well, HyperCycle is one of the projects built within the Singularity Net family, led by Tufi Salibra, who is the author of the TOTA protocol, this reputational-based non-blockchain needing um, validation network that is running on a side chain of Cardano. Oh, right. It was just, you know, this progression of Cardano's excellent. Ben Gortzel and Singularity Net is excellent. I've used some of the other stuff in the Singularity Net family, like Singularity DAO. I've got Bitcoin trading on that AI algorithm. So AI is trading Bitcoin for me on Singularity DAO. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm a new net. I'm a new net holder. Um, there's a lot of wonderful stuff coming out of this, and it's all AI related. And I think AI is, is a larger part of the future than it is now, which seems like a real natural progression for me as an investor. So, friend turned me on to the cycle, and they hired me as a, I'm, I'm part of the team, I'm, I'm part of the public communication ambassador program that makes sense yeah you know i'm looking at this and like um doesn't it's not i mean there's it's very few places correct well it's real new you got to remember i think we're only six or seven months old oh you go, so so guys you heard that this is this is a risky play right risky play jerry doesn't think it's risky he thinks it's gonna be great I, I'm not saying mortgage your house and buy hyper. I'm saying, I'm saying there are very legitimate speculation quotas to anybody's portfolio, and I believe the vertical or the the, the topic or category of artificial intelligence is only going to grow, right? And so I think to myself, if AWS and Meta and Google and Microsoft corner that market yeah then mm -hmm. all will ever be is product but if i get a chance to own it some part of the infrastructure for a decentralized distributed network that does those things stronger better faster and cheaper why wouldn't i take a shot at some of that also not a bad idea yeah yeah Hey, here's another question. Did Jerry ever develop those 10 lots? No. Matter of fact, I couldn't make the balloon payment 
that's coming due this December, and I'm walking away. I'm going to let my lease option die. Yeah. Just couldn't make it, huh? Well, like if I made it, then I wouldn't be able to do anything else. I'd have no other life. See, this is the problem. This is the problem in all these markets. I've seen like, uh, like this was the problem. Like I see this as a problem for real estate in general moving forward. Cause you know, if you've, if you've got like balloon payments, something like that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And if you, and you have to really think about it, it's like, what do I want to put my money into? You know, this, which could be real estate is like a long-term play. Might I want to deal with this, you know, three, five, 10 years, or do I want to get more into this other asset, like a crypto digital asset or something, or even like bonds or T-bills and like, I just want this. It just depends on what's, that's, that's why like nobody on YouTube can give any financial advice because they don't know your particular situation, what you want to do, what your goals are. I'd like to answer uh, Gary. Gary Lang asked, this is AGIX they're talking about? And uh, yes, they have been talking about AGIX, which is the token that represents singularity.net. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, just singularity net. Singularity. But that's, well, let's take a look. Singularity. Thirty six. This one, right? Yep. Yes, sir. AGIX. So yeah, so this is singularity.net. This is another this is another AI play, right? Or no? It's a, this is interesting because what they're building is not only a network, but a marketplace where an AI developer can go and sell or lease his AI to other people. Mm. You, so you might come you might come up with a great um, dollar cost average. You might be a, a, a developer and you come up with this incredible dollar cost averaging AI algorithm, right? Yeah. That'll 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 fluctuate the actual amount of distribution based on you know five hundred thousand factors, right? And you put it on this free and open distributed market, but even who wants to go to the marketplace and buy it can yeah. buy it, plug it into something, right? Well. We, if we don't develop marketplaces and networks to do that, then everything will be run by Meta, AWS, Google, and Microsoft. Yeah, right, which is no good. And then when Gary, when Jerry comes back, look at this one. Buy a Bitcoin before they unleash AI trading bots on crypto because they, because when they do, Bitcoin will moon. Bots, what do you think? It's already happening. Like I told you, I've got Bitcoin trading on Singularity DAO, which is an art. It's an out. Al- those are trading algorithms, um, high frequency trading algorithms that are is trading Bitcoin with a long only strategy, long yeah. only. Long but you only. Get one that does short, well, short and long. I chose not to. I just want I want the long. I just I'm long Bitcoin period. That's it. I don't want to mess around. Yeah, it's, it's tough because like, like I don't know. I know people want to time the market, and everybody believes they can do it, and some some do some do do it, but not consistently. I think that's the big thing. Whatever, Rob. Just is just to let everybody know how human I am. November two thousand twenty one, my twenty three thousand dollar crypto investment was a million dollars. Nice. But it was nice until I didn't do anything. And I rode the mar- so I rode the market with patience and tolerance and perseverance all the way to the promised land. And then I didn't cash out. I didn't even take the advice I give my, my own clients. Mm. It's tough, isn't it? It really until you've been there, it's hard. It's hard. I think that's something we have to live through because I'll bet I won't make that mistake again. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. This is this is on my my agenda to do. Is I did this video and I always talk about it. On and it's you can find it on YouTube, and I think I share, actually it's, there's a link in the description of all my videos about when I'm gonna sell and the indicators I'm using. What I want to do is. Like I know people watch it, but I know they have questions. But I, I think the problem is like they have questions and they forget the question or they're like, oh, I'll figure it out later. I'm gonna live stream this video again 
I'm going to put myself in the lower left-hand corner. I'm just going to have people listen to it. And then as questions pop up, I'll stop the video and just start answering questions. That's my idea. Because I use like, I mean, I use like the basic of, of uh, indicators. I think if you don't, if you have a plan now, this is the most rational you're going to be right now. Because once the bull run starts coming, you never, ever think that like, that you'll mess this up because you're like, oh, I, you know, I know when it goes up, you know, 150% or whatever else is, I'm going to start selling, but you don't. And you, you have to like, make sure you have it locked in and just follow your, your plan. Because if not, everything gets screwed up. Or use some new AI technology to create the algorithm or the bot to execute your desire. And that way takes all the emotion out of it. Yeah, but the only, th you know what the, what would be cool what the bot could do is take it from my cold storage device and then go onto the exchanges because I'm not leaving, and I'm not leaving squat in the exchanges anymore. I learned that lesson. So I've got three different storage devices. I got uh, Tangem. Okay, love it. Yeah. And then did you see that they just put out, now you can use a seed phrase or a mnemonic phrase. I think that's really cool. When I was uh, doing a lot of interviews on my YouTube channel, I got, I had the good fortune of having an hour interview with the CEO. What a wonderful guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He yes. Knows. Yeah, good guy. I mean, it seemed like it. Then, and then uh, since this, it was created, I'll show you. I don't know why I keep doing this. So on their website, because everybody's asked me like, well, I've, I haven't heard of it, so is it good? I mean, so far it's good. I mean, nothing's, I mean, Nano Ledger hasn't had any hacks, right? Okay. No, nah, I take that back. There was a, a hack of data, but not of, not of crypto. Yeah, your email address is what they yeah. got. Which that's like everything that I've ever been involved with. So everybody's got my email, it seems like. But then even them, since they came out in 2018, is that they've had zero hacks out of 850,000. And now, of course, uh, they have. And the, the, the big knock was people didn't like that the private key was in you know these three cards. Yeah. So they, want, they had to have a mnemonic phrase. So Tan was like, well, here you go. And then... That just that just started uh, this week, as a matter of fact. So yeah, like I'd like to back to the, the the statement I was saying, if the bot could take my from my cold storage device and stick it over to Coinbase and then Coinbase execute it, then yeah, that'd be that'd be very. At very some sweet. point, you'll be able to create an algorithm to do that for yourself. Yeah, you yeah. will be. You'll be able to trust that algorithm with the private keys. <clears throat> It will just execute what you told it to do. Now, the next level of weirdness in cybersecurity is going to come from how can algorithms get hacked? How can you hack an AI? Yeah. That's the, next, that, that's the next progression of cybersecurity. We'll go to, to ensuring kind of what they call uh, lock tight code, right? Code that, uh, yeah. Code. You know what? You know what? Just talking about this, I thought about something. What I should do is... Um, Ben's website, the one I'm always using, uh, Into the Cryptoverse here. He's got, so he's got a, when you, when you sign up for Into the Cryptoverse, there's a, also an app that you can, you can download off the, off the site. Or off, it's actually on Android and Apple too. And you can, you can make alerts come up. Actually, I guess you can do it on anything, but you can do it on, on alerts when you're out of the, uh, the risk bands. Oh. And I'll show you like here. Historical time and risk bands. So like this is Bitcoin, you know? And uh, right now it's, at, it's on this risk band because it's kind of heating up a little bit, but you, it could send you alerts when it gets to like these three risk bands. And that would be a great, great idea to say, you know what? Out of, out of Bitcoin's existence, it's only been in the 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 for 125 days, or this one, 80 days, or, I mean, this one, jeez, 18 days. This if, would, would be good information if you were in the in the Bitcoin options market. Yeah. You know, when you're doing, uh, buying calls and puts and things like that. Ah, uh, that's all. That is wow, good. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that it's one too. Finding neat little things about into the crypto burst. <laughs> well, that's just perspective. I love it. Yeah, that's it. Bullet says no one ever got wrecked taking profits. This is true. Bullet is right. Uh, actually, Mullet's right. 
but someone corrected me one time when I said that. No one ever went broke taking profits. And somebody, I think it was somebody from like Turkey. And they said that they sold their, I want to say they sold their house or something. They sold one, an asset. We'll just say an asset, right? And of course, they got paid in the, the fiat currency of Turkey. Oh. And he said, I lost a lot. And I said, that's the problem. And you know what? That would, that would go back to what we were just talking about, the tokenization of assets. Like if you could sell your house in Venezuela, right? And you're like, I don't trust this nonsense. And then you go into Coinbase, if it was over there, and you could tokenize real world assets and put your funds into that. And then whatever Coinbase does with your, with your Venezuelan boulevard, whatever it is. Sell your house, not for Venezuelan boulevard, which yeah, is, it, yeah. I mean, literally, <laughs> it's losing value as you look at it. Right? I mean, as it's being passed from one guy to the next, you could accept uh, Apple stock or gold, oh, or, or gold. gold. Yeah, yeah. or well, gold would be, or you know, whatever. Yeah, gold would be great, except for know. if you're if you're hold, if you're holding on to gold and you're in Venezuela, and there's another uprising, and you're like, I'll just because you don't have to be the smartest person. And the best investor, you just got to be stronger than your neighbor to steal his gold, right? It's the same thing with like Mad Max. People are like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna store my my gold bullions and my silver and all my food, and I'm like, that does no good unless you have a way to protect it. Exactly, but if your gold and your silver and your Apple stock was digitized, true. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You're right. Wallet that all you had to remember is the 12 word phrase or the 24 word phrase. Then wherever you are is where your wealth is. And, and hopefully you can find somebody that believes you and will feed you until you can get to some place safe to. Yeah, that's why you look up Jerry. Go to Costa Rica. J2 Day. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting extra room dusted. J2 Day said, this is why everyone wants a piece of the stable coins. That's true. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. DCA, DC out. Never fully exit Bitcoin just in case. That's a good been my thesis too i'm just not going to be i like there's a difference between like us and michael saylor right i'm not a billionaire yet and uh all the like it's good for him and his company and his stock to accumulate as much bitcoin as humanly possible but i guarantee you i can't guarantee anything but i, I it's a pretty good bet he probably doesn't have student loans <laughs> he probably doesn't have massive credit card debt and he probably owns his house so, and probably some cars and a yacht and whatever else. So I don't know if you do that, but so like when everybody's talking about, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep it forever. I'm like, I don't know if that's the right thing for everybody. That doesn't make any sense. I have, I have some things that I have no intention of letting go. Yeah. But that's not a hundred percent of my, of my portfolio. Yeah. I think everybody's gotta, everybody's gotta, you know, at some point, like, I never thought that I would sell one of my properties in Houston. So I was like, why would I sell that? It's like just a recurring. And then circumstances change and you gotta, you're like, well, this would be the right time to sell. And we sold it in 2020, end of 2021, early 2022. And it was a bidding war. People paid cash for it. It was crazy. Uh, I think that's, I think we answered everybody's questions. Oh, where is a great place to hide private keys then? Or your mnemonic phrase. What's the mnemonic phrase? Well, depending upon where you were, right? Here, here are some of the most common. If you have a safe deposit box at, at the bank, that's a great place to have a little notepad, a little, little book with your special stuff in it. Depends on the bank, Jerry, right? Depends on the bank. Like, well, who, who knows? I mean, if you're talking about like in, in some bank in some third world country. But I'm just, I just wanted to say that because people would be like, what about this? So, okay, you're right. The bank's great. Good spot. Now, another one is, um, you know, something that you would uh, like. Here's a trick, and I only did this in my other place. Behind one of my photos on the wall, I yeah, have one. Uh, what do you call a post-it note? Mm. And a yeah, I can do that. You can do that, or separate them. If there was a. And, that's the only photo that you're going to really want to get. Go get this particular photo because the goodies are on the back. Let's see. There's this. That's a good one. One that I use. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah, the Shield Folio. Oh, okay. Yeah, what I like is it, it's waterproof. I mean, it's not fireproof, so if it's in a fire, sorry about that. It's gone. But uh, yeah, I just use that to put everything else in there. And then, of course, it has a, uh, let's see. A tap. 50 bent water, tear. And then what's pretty cool is that you can use, um, you can write with, um, is that ink? Black ink? Uh-huh. Well, obviously black ink, genius. No, um, the... Uh, <laughs> The one, one, the one where you can use like, 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 like a black light and just shine it over there. Oh, so, infrared, um, something indecent, something, uh, how do you pronounce that? Something like that. Ah, this is it. Iridescent ink. Yeah. So like it was, it was pretty like here. Perfect. Ghost pen, invisible ink. Yeah. Beautiful. So like, so like someone who's like, who knows, or like who looks at your wall and like, oh, this looks like a seed phrase. Or this really like a mnemonic phrase. It won't look like anything to them because that's it. And of course, yes, there's going to be like the one percent of of uh, of robbers who know this trick and will look into it. But those robbers, those thieves, they're probably somebody you know, and they were going to wrench attack you anyhow. So that's it. <laughs> is it is it stupid proof? I need to test it. Ugh, I've. If I can use it, it's stupid roof. We'll say that. Hello from Florida. Let's really look inside that one. <laughs> Under a roof tile up top. Come on, bot. I don't think that's going to be. I'm not going up there. Forget it. Ah, Christian says, next year we'll see the real crisis and inflation recession crash. There was now crisis from 2020 till now. If I'll get catched up by Fed and their money printing. Yeah, I don't know. I happen to agree with Christian. I, I think that uh, I don't think we've seen the end of rate hikes. In other words, I think I think we're going to continue to see more demand destruction from a higher rate environment, which means you know the the, the pricing of collateral is going to change. You know that's the thing that ruined those banks earlier this year is is not because they didn't do a good job. It's just that when the collateral that was holding them up got re price now all of a sudden the, the five billion dollars that they had on paper to hold them up is now only worth two and a half million a billion now everything changes right yeah yeah i, I think that's going to continue to happen it's going to get funky over the next couple months yeah i think it is going to be too and like but that's a funny thing because like i thought for sure whoops i thought for sure <clears throat> higher for longer that's right I thought for sure that September was going to play out the same way, you know, and it's going to be negative. And now October, like, are we, I'm going to, I don't, are we out this year? Let me see. This year, I mean, this, for this month so far. 1.1, now we're down a little bit. And actually, let's see. Oops. There we go. Well, so far in October, we're at three point. We're up. We're green. That's pretty good. Now this is just Bitcoin, though, right? So there are certain segments. Yeah. There's certain segments of our of our market structure that that are doing like AI stuff way up. A lot of blockchain stuff is way up. Go take yeah. a look at uh, Johnson and Johnson. Go take a look at Cargill Foods. Go take a look at. Well, don't look at the pharmaceutical companies because they're still fat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, you're right. I mean, stocks, let's see. I think we've got, that's commodities, indices. Oh, those are the indices. Let's take a look at Apple. Even Apple was up in October. Yeah, that's Amazon right there. I like it. Oh, Amazon, Apple. Oh, damn, there was a down almost nine percent like last month. What about Tesla? Raise favorite. Yeah. September wasn't great, but damn, look at June and May. That's yeah. pretty good. And January. Yeah. Not too bad. 
And then, of course, we can take a look at indices. Yeah. 0.48. But September, see, this is the thing we were talking about yesterday. While I was listening, there was a, uh, a video we did about Dan Moorhead, who is the CFO of... Tiger, and then became this, uh, the head guy at Pantera. Pantera Capital, that's it. And uh, he was talking about how, how Bitcoin over the last you know, six to nine months has become uncorrelated to the markets. And people are like, no, that's... And then, of course, we, we took a look at it. And, and you can find it here, but I can just see, even see it very clearly here. September, the S&P 500 was negative, almost negative five. And then we take a look at, you know, up 4%. But then also, take a look at the correlation coefficients, whether that be Pearson or Spearman, doesn't matter. And of course, when we're talking about like correlation, if it's, if it's uh, all the way to one, that means it's, it's positively correlated. It means if, if Tesla or if S&P 500 goes up and NASDAQ goes up, then Bitcoin total market cap also goes up. So they're, they're in tandem. If it's negative, they do the opposite. If S&P 500 goes up, then Bitcoin will go down the exact same. Then zero, it does whatever it wants to do, but it's not correlated whatsoever. So the closer it is to zero, the better off it is. So we can see here, oh, it's not showing. Let's see. Crypto and stocks and metals. Now it's just a crypto and stocks. Although I would be interested to see what it, how Bitcoin, so Bitcoin to S&P is zero. And then of course we take a look at the history over here, a little bit different. Oh, this is Bitcoin and Ethereum. Of course, that's going to be correlated. Um, indices. That's more like it. And there's a lot of times when it does, it's, you know, it's all over the place. But it seems to be more of a, a, a non-correlated. But let's see, like, Bitcoin to gold. Huh. It's kind of negative. But that's over 60 days. Let's go 30. Bitcoin and S&P, negative. Wow. And then gold, negative as well. Interesting. Anyhow, it was, it was a good thesis, and I was like, I didn't know it was that uncorrelated, but so enough. That was a great 11-minute interview, Dan Moorhead. Yeah, right? That was a good I, one. I watched it five times, had to stop it, break down, take notes. No, I'm serious. It's good. Moorhead, yeah. You know, you know what I like about Dan was he was the one that, that said that in 2017 when the, when the CBOE features ETF came out, he said, that's going to drop us 50% at least. And I was like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because I was just new in the market. <laughs> and that was on December 15th. I think it was, it hit December 19th. And of course, it, it, that was the catalyst to take us into January where everything went down the, down the floor. And Dan was right on that one. All right. Well, Jerry, it's been over an hour. I think we should get out of here. Let people watch their football games. There right? you go. Thank you, Rob. And thank you, everybody, for allowing me to be part of this day for you or with you. Yes. Thanks, everybody. So, again, on your way out, if you do me a favor, like and subscribe. Leave a comment, negative or positive. I don't care as long as it's something. YouTube seems to like that algorithm. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. I appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.